Welcome and thank you for tuning in to Revelation Examination, your on the air school of eschatology with Doc, Professor Dr. D and myself, Lady Jalay Dotson, that hosts this show. We are so excited that you're tuning in on today where we are taking you through the book of Revelation, a one year journey through the book of Revelation. Right now, Dr. D is teaching in chapter one, so get your Bibles ready. Uh, get your paper and pen ready, and also I invite you to call someone, call your pastor, call your Sunday school teacher, call your missionaries, call the evangelists, call your lay, fellow lay members, call anyone you know that is interested or has any concern about the end times that we live in. As we are uh, teaching through the book of Revelation, we are a school of eschatology. Eschatology is the study of the end times. We are so grateful that you tuned in today. Uh, Dr. D has got a dynamic message he has prepared for you, so we invite you to get ready as we don't skimp on the old family recipe. At this present time, we'll bring in Dr. D, our professor of eschatology, for today's lesson. Well, thank you, Lady J, uh, for all you do, and welcome once again out there, uh, all you students that's coming into class on today. Oh, yeah, it's time to get down and get the book in in the book of Revelation. And you know it's not revelations, it's not plural, it's singular. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. There's one person being revealed here. There's a lot of things going on, but it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. I wanna thank you today and do, uh, Lady J say call somebody. I would suggest that you take that advice because there's so many people out there have always wanted to know about the book of Revelation but they've had nobody to give them the kind of answers that they deserve. And that, or that those answers that they deserve are educated, academically sound, biblically sound, doctrinally sound uh, answers uh, to the questions about the end times. Not a lot, of this, a lot of this stuff you get on television, a lot of this political garbage as people are preaching uh, as eschatology, but it's really methodology. We go to the book. We allow you to, I mean, do this for me. You don't have to take anything I say at face value. But what I would like you to do, there are some other great writers out there. There are professors, well known, uh, 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 that have their books out. And they're professors and doctors of eschatology. You need to go and uh, read some of those other a great eschatologist, and then you come back and tell me whether or not I'm on track or not, because this is not all about what I know, but I've researched and I've studied over the years, and I try to come down the line that's more closely aligned with the book. So we're still in the first chapter of the book of Revelation, and uh, we're taking it verse by verse, and that's what's so nice about what we do. I'm not trying to rush it. I'm trying to help you to become a student of eschatology. Everybody don't learn at the same pace. This is why we invite you to write us uh, or go to our website or email us. You might have questions. In fact, we, we invite you to send your questions um, to our website or, or call us about your questions and Lady J will be back uh, at the conclusion of this lesson. Uh, with more information as to how you can do that. And also, she also said, if you'd like to uh, be a blessing to this ministry, we certainly uh, would appreciate it because we want to expand what we are doing around the world. And so you go tell everyone to turn in right now to the OCN Broadcast Network uh, .org and put, press live and because Revelation Examination is on the air, okay, with Dr. D. And guess what? We don't skimp on the old family recipe. And remember this. If you don't know the book of Revelation, then you don't know how the story ends. Because the book of Revelation is the end of the story. Now, we left off on our, of our last lesson uh, dealing with, we had just got through dealing with, um, Christ as being the first begotten of the dead. And we said that the reason he's the first begotten of the dead, first of all, he got up under his own power. You understand? And next, he's the only one that ever died, uh, that was resurrected, that did not have to 
die again. So he's the first begotten of the dead. Now, we are down to, and we said that also that uh, God was making us, no matter who it is, it's not just ministers or priests or prophets, but everyone that accepts him into their lives, uh, he will make you a king and a priest in his kingdom. He's lifted up to us up to a status far greater than we could have ever gotten to on our own. In fact, at, there was a time that if someone needed God, they would have to go to a priest. But guess what? God has given, he allows us to assume that role now. They can come to you and you can tell them, guess what? You can get on your own knees and go to God. Or you yourself can lead them to Jesus Christ. Oh, what a wonderful thing this is. Now, let's go to that verse 7. So it's Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. This is good stuff. It says, Behold, he, talking about Jesus Christ, keep in mind the book of Revelation is a prophetic book. It is uh, the study of eschatology, is the study of end times. And the book of Revelation is telling us what is going to take place in the end times. And it says, Behold, he, speaking of Jesus Christ, cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, uh, even so, amen. Uh, there's a little mix up on this verse. Um, a lot of people believe that this is the rapture. Well, uh, this is not the rapture. Uh, this is not the rapture. And I'm going to show you why it's not the rapture. Uh, make sure you have your Bibles. And you should have a pencil and a paper or ink pen with you. You should be taking notes. Uh, you have been invited to get our workbook to follow along with me on the board. And we're going to be putting more emphasis on that as we gather enough people to have our classes. And so it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds. Now, um, I'm not going to stick on that too much, but I personally believe that this, these are not the clouds of our second heaven. Uh, the second heaven, uh, I mean, of, the, of, um, of our first heaven, should I mean, uh, which is the, our atmosphere out there. I believe that these are the clouds and the saints and the armies, the white-robed armies of saints that's going to come back with Jesus Christ from uh, eternity down here to earth. It says he didn't come in clouds. He's coming with clouds. I believe these are the great clouds of witnesses that's going to come back with Jesus Christ. Because when he left here, it was all a physical thing. But his coming back is all spiritual. Hallelujah. He's coming back with the four armies of God, the four white-robed armies of God. And watch this. And every eye shall see him. So, in this return, in this coming back, it says that every eye shall see him. Now, that right there tells us that this is not the rapture. That this is not the rapture. The fact that every eye shall see him. I know I've heard preachers preaching that, oh, you're going to be standing there and, you, and that... Uh, you're going to wish that uh, you were saved when he come back. And however, this is talking about the second coming of Christ. The rapture would have taken place some seven years earlier. You understand? In the rapture, nobody is going to see the rapture. If you're saved, you're not going to see the rapture. If you are a sinner, you are not going to see the rapture. Why? Because the Bible declares that 
He is coming back in the moment of a twinkling of an eye. A twinkling of an eye. We're going to be changed. We're going to be changed in a twinkling of the eye. Now, if you're going to be changed that fast, then you won't have time to see it because you are going to be it. By the time you realize anything, you're going to already have been changed. Now, a twinkling is not a blink. A, a twinkling is the time that it takes light traveling at 186,000 miles per second to enter the front of your eye and bounce off the back of your eye. Now, that light can get around the world eight times in one second. So how long does you think, that, do you think it takes light to hit your eye and get off the back of the eye? That's a twinkle. So you're not going to see the rapture. You're going to be the rapture. But however, during the second coming of Christ, they are going to see him coming back because he's coming back to set up his kingdom. The rapture is not the second coming. Let's establish that the second coming, the first coming, was when Christ came to the earth. He set foot on the earth and established a life here on earth. The rapture, Christ does not set foot on earth. The saints are taking, taken off of the earth in an instant. They go. They disappear. They vanish. They're not people saying, oh, there they go. There's 10, 20, 15. That's not going to happen. It's just going to happen. He says, I come as a thief in the night. That's talking about the rapture. I'm coming as a thief in the night. A thief doesn't knock on your door and say, I'll be by to steal your, 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 your flat uh, screen television tomorrow about one o'clock. A thief waits until it's most appropriate uh, for him to get in and get out without being seen with your goods. So this is speaking of the second coming of Christ that everybody, it lets us know here, watch this. Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. Now watch this. And they which also pierced him. That means those are the people that killed him, right? Pierced him. Those people are dead. It says, and they also which pierced him, and all the kindred of the earth, every person on the earth, shall wail because of him, even so, amen. So at the second coming, when he comes back, they're going to realize that it was too late for most of them. Hallelujah. Because What's going to happen is the second coming is going to be the conclusion. It's going to signal the conclusion of the great tribulation. And he's coming back first as a judge to judge those people that took the mark of the beast. So this is speaking of the second coming and not the rapture. The rapture is not the second coming and the second coming is not the rapture. Now, he says there to establish Christ here once again, as he did in the earlier part of the verse, of the verses. He's laying bare his deity credentials. He's saying, if you're questioning as to who I am, he says, I am. First of all, I am. Who? I am Alpha and uh, Omega, the beginning and the end. This is God completely. He's the Alpha of life. He's the Omega of life. He's the Alpha of all things. He, he said that I am God. I told you that the book of Revelation is going to reveal him completely. Saith the Lord. Now watch this. 
Now we found that up in verse, let me see which verse that was. Verse 4, we found that God the Father declared himself, uh, he that which is, was, and is to come. Now look what Jesus says about himself. Uh, the Lord which is, which was, and which is to come, the almighty God. That doesn't mean that he is now, he was somewhere, and that he's going to come from somewhere. That's not what it's saying. What this is establishing is that he is the eternally self-existing God. This is establishing his omnipresence, that he is everywhere because he comes from nowhere. In other words, he's letting you know that wherever you go, however you go, when you get there, he is already there because he is the total existence of everything. In fact, the Bible lets us know that in him, we, that's you, that's me, that's your brother, your sister, your husband, your wife, we live, we move, and we have our existence inside of his existence. Thank God. So he's declaring himself, he is not a mighty God. That's not what he is. He's not just the force be with you. That's not what he is. He says, the almighty God. It's in the book. I did not put it there. He is God almighty. Not just a mighty God. My Jehovah Witness friends out there, I want you to know you're on the wrong God track. You're walking down a, a dangerous road to an eternity without Jesus Christ. You have lowered him to a little g in your book. Hallelujah. And just one of the other gods. But he declared here that he's almighty God and he's God almighty. Thank God. In that ninth verse, it says, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, let's keep in mind. Let me go back just in case you missed a few classes. The book of Revelation was authored by God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, it was passed on to John to be recorded as the book of Revelation, as letters that was to be sent to the church. At this particular time, by the way, the Emperor Domitian had banished John to this island of Patmos. And in case you missed the first lessons on what you need to know before you try to get to know the book of Revelation, the island of Patmos was a prison or penal island where they would send prisoners to basically banish them out of society and John was sent there because he refused to stop preaching the gospel. Domitian was through with John. Rome was through with John. And some of the other folk were through with, was through with John. But God was not through with John. Don't you feel sometime that you have been God forsaken? You might feel that God has abandoned you. But I want you to know God loves you with eternal love. He will never abandon you. The only way you to get away from God is that you turn your back on him and walk away. He has a plan for you every day. But one of the things he wants us to be able to do 
is to go through some things. He want to grow us that we might be able to take some things, that he might make us useful in his kingdom. And so here John is writing to the other saints because at this time the church is suffering great persecution under the emperor Domitian. And he knows that they are uh, what they're going through and so some may have questions as to what John is going through. So John lets them know here he, he, he wants to join shoulders with them. He said, I, John, who also I'm your brother, your brother John, and I'm your companion in tribulation. I am going through some of the same things that you are going through. And in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. It's taken me, I have to uh, recognize the kingdom of Christ. I have to be patient in what God has, uh, Christ has told us. Hallelujah. And he wants you to be patient. As John is telling these saints, we all have to be patient with what we're going through. He says that I was in an island that is called Patmos. I'm in prison. They knew what Patmos was. I'm in prison. And guess why I'm here? I am in prison for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I'm not in here because I robbed uh, a store, John is saying. I'm not in here because I stole someone's ox or sheep. I'm not in here because I committed a crime. I'm in here because I'm standing on the word of Jesus Christ. I refuse to call the emperor's Lord. I refuse to worship any other God. I'm standing on the fact that Jesus Christ has laid down his life. Now keep in mind, this is some book of Revelation written in A.D. 95, 96. That's some 66 years after the death of Jesus Christ. But John has said, I'm still standing. I wonder if your Sunday school teacher is still standing. If they're not and you know where they are, give them a call. Shoot them out a, a text or facts and tell them, hallelujah, to turn to the OCN network. Hallelujah. Broadcast network. Revelation examination is on the air and we are talking. You can make it. We are talking, get back up. You can take it. We are talking, yes, you can. Yes, you can go another step. Why? Because you can do all things through this Jesus Christ, and he will strengthen you. You're not through. You're not done. You're not washed up. Pastor, put down those cigarettes. Put down those drugs or put down whatever it is. Go back to your knees because God still loves and needs you. More than ever, you're still important to him. Yes, you are. Now, as we close this lesson, I want to invite you to invite Christ into your life. Because that's what he lives for. Lord Jesus, repeat me. Come into my heart. Wash me from my sins. Change my life and live in me forever. I love you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, I thank you, praise, and magnify you. Amen. God bless you. That was just absolutely phenomenal, dynamic. I mean, what a mighty God, the ultimate, the almighty God that we serve. He has chosen and commissioned this ministry to bring this message, this book of Revelation, to the world. He has chosen to reveal himself for everything that he is to the church. We invite you to be a blessing to this ministry. Did you know the book of Revelation is the only book in the Bible with a blessing affixed to it? So we invite you to sow into this blessing. You may send your love offerings or even write us at Wordwise Ministries at P.O. Box 2425, Rancho Cucamonga, California, 91729. You can also give us a call for more information at 909 296 0093 and you can also research on the website which is www.wordwiseministries.org 
Um, and we'd like to hear about your comments and your questions on today's teaching. So please contact us on the website or please email us at the number one, the word revelation at wordwiseministries.org. We are still accepting student signups for the certifications for both master level students and certified instructor level students as we take you on the one year journey through the book of Revelation. I, as, I am Lady J, I as well as myself, Dr. D, host this, uh, host this broadcast. And we are so grateful that you tuned in today and we are, it is our prayer that this is a blessing to you and that you may also be a blessing to all of those around you. So please tell someone about this show. We are, we are twice a week on a weekly basis and we are grateful to have your, uh, your, tune, your, your tuning in to the broadcast. Again, my name is Lady Jalee Dotson. You've been tuning in to Revelation Examination. Thank you again. God bless you, and we will see you next time.